um, when we're well, welcome to the next talk session. The first talk session was very, very enlightening. I did learn a lot. And now we'll be moving on to our second session, which will be handled by Mrs. Sandra Aguebo. And I'll just do a little introduction of her. Mrs. Sandra Aguebo is the award-winning first lady mechanic in Nigeria and founder, stroke CEO of the Lady Mechanic Initiative. I'm sure we've known her if you've watched news, you would have seen a lot of uh, interviews for, on her. And it's an NGO established to empower vulnerable girls and women with mechanical and technical skills for a better life. Sandra has also partnered with the first ladies of several Nigerian states to empower disadvantaged women and girls filled by the education system, single parents, child labor victims, and others stigmatized by culture, religious, and gender biases. She has been featured on CNN, BBC World Service, Al Jazeera, and other media networks for her outstanding work with young men. And having said that, with a round of applause, can we please welcome to the stage Mrs. Sandra Agrebo. Welcome, madam. I congratulate the organizers of this wonderful event. It's a great one and nice to speak to everybody here. Uh, my name is Sandra. I am from Bini City, Edo State. Um, I'm the first lady mechanic in Nigeria, as uh, she has explained. Um, I'm the founder of the Lady Mechanic Initiative. The initiative has been founded since 2004, but I have been a mechanic for about 36 years. I started when I was very young. I was a pupil in primary school when that dream came up and I started going to the workshop to learn how to fix cars. The very first night I had that dream, I had to run to my father's room to start banging the door. Daddy, 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 daddy. Jesus Christ is teaching me how to fix cars in my dream. And my dad was like, what are you talking about? My friend, go and sleep. My father took it as, you know, nightmare or maybe I overslept or something. But that persisted for like, you know, one week. Same dream. Jesus Christ teaching me how to fix cars. And, you know, I started, you know, like it has been ordained that this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. And this happened in the, 90, in the 80s, to be specific, 1985. And then I started my secondary school, just primary to secondary. And my secondary school was very close to my house. It was like 10 minutes walk. And uh, I started disturbing my parents. I said, no, you have to take me to a workshop. Jesus Christ said, you should take me to a workshop where I can start learning how to fix cars. And uh, my mom, who we'll just jump out and say, no, you are not going anywhere. I don't have a daughter that engine will go and drop her and she'll just die, you know? I said, no, but that's what I want to do. My mom said, never, not in this house. Apparently, I come from a polygamous somewhere where my father is married to like seven wives and he was very rich. He had, we had like boys and guests hosted in my house and, uh, you know, we are 24 in numbers, the children, I'm like the 14th or the 16th uh, child in the house. So everybody was like, what is she talking about? But I understand where I was going to. I understand what I, I've dreamt about and that I needed to pursue it to become a reality in my life. But nobody understood what I was talking about in the house. But one day my dad was meant to travel abroad. He went abroad and he came back and said, you know what? I saw female mechanics abroad, aeronautic engineers. And, you know, I jumped forward. I said, Daddy, Daddy, you saw them? Did you see any woman under the car? He was laughing. I said, Daddy, please take me to the play. I don't want any gifts that you brought from this trip. And he promised, don't worry, I will take you. I was so happy. I never asked for anything. I started looking for something I'm going to wear to the workshop that day. So this faithful day, we saw that... My mom came out and said, no, 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 you're not taking her anywhere. Just let her be. And I said, mommy, no, God said you should talk, take me there. I have to go there today. You promised me. And we eventually went to the garage where my father uses to fix his car, where he fixes his own vehicles. And we got there. 
he enrolled me. We met a lot of, you know, customers there wanting to fix their own vehicle. And I saw this big engine, you know, dismantled on the table, black, black engine oil running down the table. My spirit immediately fell in love with that dark engine oil. And I told my dad, I'm not going home today, so you have to register me so that I'll be able to start today. This is how I started the journey so far. So that very first day, my dad enrolled me and I started, you know, learning. That very day, I was so happy that every oil I see on the ground, every debt I see on the tools, I'll rub it and use it to rub my body so that it will look as if I've been walking, you know. So they, they started teaching me how to know the tools, the screwdriver, the pliers, those things. And, you know, by the time we are through, the children around the area, they were right in front of the gate waiting to woo me. The, the news has gone around the neighborhood. There's a lady mechanic in that garage. Everybody was coming to look at me. I'm talking about 1985. So that's a very long time. So then it was like it was like a taboo for a woman to say you want to venture into that kind of trade, you know. So when I closed that day, I looked so dirty with my short knicker and my small blouse. I was just very, very young, too young. So I was walking home. They started running after me. Me too, I was running. And they were saying, you are not ashamed of yourself. Why are you a mechanic? Why are you doing this kind of job? I ran home and, you know, I was crying. My father was there. My mom was right in the house. So I went to my dad. I was crying. My dad said, what happened to you? I said, some children, they were running after me and abusing me. Daddy, daddy, what should I do? My dad said, don't worry. Let them laugh at you today. Tomorrow, you will be celebrated. So that really is what I think is actually happening all day like that. You know, because of you know where we are, where we are today, from where we started. Not to take too much of your time, I started my lady mechanic initiative with eight hundred naira, rather my garage called Sanders Car Care Garage. I opened up my garage in Lagos when I was twenty three years old, right behind the Federal Secretariat in Ikoi. But before then, I worked after my school. I work with the Bender Transport Service in Benin City, now Edo Line. Then there was no Edo State. It was Bender Transport Service. So I worked there for about two years. Then I got another employment with the Nigeria Railway Corporation in Ebute Meta in Lagos State. I was not fixing their locomotive, but I was in charge of all their vehicles, the fleets in their plant yard. I was fixing the vehicles right there in, in Lagos. When, uh, when they now had, uh, you know, problem of no payment of salary at the Nigeria Railway Corporation in the early 90s, say 92, so I had to say, you know what, let me go and look for greener pasture abroad to start, you know, uh, you know, fixing cars and making money. Let me travel out. I started looking for a visa. I was looking for a visa. And the visa I finally got was Switzerland visa. But I was looking for JAMA visa, but I got Swiss. And then when I got Switzerland visa, I was not looking for, you know, money for tickets. Then they were selling tickets about 4,000 to 5,000 naira in the early 90s for tickets that so much now. And uh, before that, I, I was able to raise money for tickets you know, apparently in Lagos State, I've already got in my own workshop where I was fixing cars right behind the Federal Secretariat. When I left the railway, railway, God came to me and said, you know what? That abroad you are going to, you are not going anywhere. Just go and look for a set of tools and go to a virgin land and start fixing your cars there. And like the way I talk to the audience now, the same way we, we talk in my dream, like, I'm not from Lagos State and I, I don't have a place to use in Lagos State to fix cars. He said, just go look for a place and you'll get a place to fix cars. When I wake up, it's like, you know, it has been ordained that this, you have been instructed to do this, you have to go do this. 
And, you know, it happened like that. I found myself behind the Federal Secretariat in Ikoi, now the second avenue called the Abacha Estate in Ikoi. In that place, it was a mini forest. I was the first person there. There was no soul there. I went into the mini forest, clear some part of, you know, the bush to get a place to park one vehicle only. And I was able to clear that place, but during the clearing, I will crab is running after my leg, my feet. I will see some red ties like that. I'll run back. And then it took me like two weeks to be able to play a portion for a vehicle to where I can park a car. When I finished doing this, I had to look for a table, a plastic table and chair, put it there. And I made a maybe structure, like first stick of food, put it on the ground and put a thick carton to shade me of the sun and the rain. Like the way you see their bulky build their, you know, where they said their little provisions. I was so proud I have a workshop, a mini, a, 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 you know, a mini, the, the workshop is, I don't know if I should call it a workshop, a made leaf structure, that kind of thing. So when I got that, I traveled back to Benin to meet my dad. And I said, Daddy, I was so proud that I have a workshop. And he said, you have a workshop? And I said, yes, Daddy, I have my own workshop. And he said, do you need money? I said, yes. Just give me 800 naira to be able to buy some tools and, you know, to use to fix cars. He gave me 800 and he said, is this enough for you? I said, yes. Are you sure? I said, yes. So I took 800 naira, came back to Lagos, went to a Balende part of Lagos, bought some tools, you know, just, you know, certain kind of tools for me to be able to use for service, not generally the old thing I wanted. I made you know, my tools boss myself because I did a lot of bench work in school using iron sheet to form different kind of like components and all that. So I was able to make, you know, my, my tools boss, put all these tools inside. So I was in workshop one day, you know, with carburetor, then there's no injector system in the vehicle the way you find it now, basically manual. And when I got this carburetor on the table, I dismantled the carburetor, dismantled and fixed back. That's basically what I was doing, you know. So in the course of all doing this, I'm singing and happy. But God came back to me to say, you have to go how to tell people what you can do for them. And I'm like, tell who now? Yeah, I think it was just building it for me, you know, like that. And since he said so, I started going out to tell people, you know what, my name is Sandra Guebo and I'm a lady mechanic. I can fix your car very well so that you can come to my workshop just like that. This very day I was driving to work. A woman was right in front of me with a Mercedes car, having overheating of the engine. And, you know, I can see this, you know, the evaporation of the water right behind and I was flashing out to stop. That was right on Todd Mayland Bridge there, that if your vehicle break down Todd Mayland Bridge, the Lagos State Authority, they will actually tow you for 25000 you pay before you take your car. So she didn't stop until we got to the traffic. I had to put my hazard line, came down from my car, and I went to her. I said, Mother, I can help you. Your car is overheating. She looked at me and, asked, and she said to me, a woman, you are a woman. I said, yes. I'm a woman, but I'm a mechanic. I can help you do this. And she said to me, really? I said, don't worry, just come down, let me help you. She came down, she went to stand. She stood very far off, like thinking her engine was going to blow. You know, that's why today you have what is called the Lady Mechanic Initiative. I started with that lady and uh, helped her open the bonnet so that it was just the radiator clip that has gone down. So I helped her fix it back because the engine was still very hot. I had to open it with a rag and, you know, I like to cool. My vehicle was like a mobile workshop. I have all this towing rope, water, tools, everything. It's like a workshop, moving workshop, mobile workshop. So I had to bring out water, help her with that, tight it back. And I called her and she came. She said, you mean you have finished this? I said, yes. Are you a mechanic? I said, yes. Where is your garage? I was so proud to tell her that my maybe belief structure garage. I said, I have a garage it's right behind the federal secretariat in Koi. And she said, how much should I pay? I said, no, you don't need to pay me. I just helped you. 
really? She said, you think I shouldn't pay you? I said, yes. Don't, you don't have to pay me. You don't have to pay me. And she said, okay, where is your workshop? And she came that day, at, you know, came to my workshop. Apparently, her office was right behind the secretariat, the federal secretariat's office of the special advisor, you know, on the seventh floor. She came and she said, ah, but there's no life here. What are you doing here? There's nobody in here. And she said to me, you know what? You have to follow us to the workshop, uh, to my office, so that we can give you a job. And I said, okay. I followed them. I followed them to their workshop. They gave me two vehicles to fix. That was the first breakthrough. I got those vehicles. So I followed them. They gave me two jobs, two vehicles to fix. Followed them to their office. They gave me two vehicles. You know, when you are working for government, you have to complete the job before payment. So I did not have money to do this servicing. I went to a Balende part of Lagos. I was so confident that this job, I'm going to do it. And I know I don't have money for spare parts, but I'm so confident that when I go to a spare parts shop at a Balende, whoever I meet, whoever I talk to, they are going to give me spare parts for credit. I went there, got these spare parts for credit by talking to the owner, sir. My name is, uh, my name is Sandra, the lady mechanic. And my garage is right behind the federal secretariat. I need you to help me with some spare pass servicing. I'll bring the money for you. Please trust me. And once you just, the man said, no problem. Take it. Which one do you want? He gave them to me. I went back, fixed these two vehicles, serviced them very well, did the brakes. And I called them that your vehicles were ready. Test drive. And they came, and they came to test drive their vehicle. And they were so happy. They said, you mean you can walk like this? They took me to the office again and gave me a check. I've never seen a check in my life before. It was just one beautiful paper they gave to me. And I said, what was this? They said, it's your money. To me, in my mind, I said money, but this is a paper. They said, no, this is money. And I left. I didn't want to argue with them. I took that paper called check. I put it under my pillow for two weeks. I didn't know what to do with it. If I wake up to go and wee in the night, this will make you laugh. If I wake up to go and wee in the night, I'll, you know, take it out under the pillow and look at it. I'll just say, God, thank you. So this is my money. This is my money. That was check. And I left it there. Until one day, I was talking to, one day I was now talking to my one of my clients and he said to me oh check you have to go and open an account use your name to open an account and put the check there that was when the check had to go to the bank and when the money came i had to build a proper you know shade now no carton shade and all that so the job started coming from different ministries labor and productivity uh, different ministries started bringing job to me I couldn't cope. I had to employ one or two other guys join me so that we are able to do it together. This is how I started. And after which the workshop started growing. After some few years, God came back to me to say, all the knowledge I've imparted to you, I want you to impart to other women. In that dream, he gave me a lady that will become a lady mechanic. After two weeks of that dream, a man came to me and said, I want you to train my wife. I want her to be like you. I want her to become a mechanic. I said, where do you stay, sir? He said, I live in Suruleri. I said, but Suruleri is very far from Ikoi, the behind the sectoria. He said, don't mind. I will transport her to come every day. He brought that same lady, black, slim. That was my first apprentice. We started off. Today, also, she has her own workshop. To cut the long story short, it's just that I have been able to pursue a dream that today has become a reality. With over 2,000 female mechanics in Nigeria, alumni member, over 1,000. Now, lady mechanic, we are in different public secondary school. We have a club called the Lady Mechanic Initiative After School Club where we are catching them young 
the pupils because that's the way I started. So after school, they come to the workshop inside the school and learn the routine maintenance of servicing and generator. A lot of them now, you know, grow a lot of interest. During holiday, we send them to the garages where we use. So that's alone, we started, you know, bringing them in, catching them young like that. Apart from that, we've been able to, you know, grow a large chains of lady mechanics. Today, you can see that our graduates, they are now having their own workshop. It's called the trainee becomes the trainers. Now you can find them in different parts of the country with their own garages, now also doing the way I have also trained them. Apart from that, we have also received a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot of visitors internationally and within Syria. And that includes Christy. That includes Christy Laga of IMF. Yeah, she came to Nigeria and she requested, she asked to see me. She met with me. That was in 2017. We have also met with the First Lady of Germany, which, of course, I just saw that the German embassy wrote a letter to me that the First Lady of Germany would want to meet with me. To me, I was like, for what? What happened? What have I done? You know? And they said nothing. She just wants to come to Nigeria to meet with you. She likes your project and all that. And before then, two weeks to arrive, the German police, they were all around my garage putting like gadgets for security reasons and all that. We were both just walking together until the arrival. And that day, the street was blocked with DSS, police, everybody. It was just short, you know. So he came, he saw me with my girls and the guests of the after school club. She was even a mechanic that day. She wore her overall that we created for her and she wore it to start losing energy. So it was fun and that brought a lot into the initiative, brought us to the limelight in the JAMA, you know, uh, um, JAMA communities, so to say. And apart from that, uh, I became the sole mechanic for Edo State government during this tenure of uh, Godwin Obaseki. And uh, I was the first he appointed when he, he became the governor of the state. And uh, I created a garage. I created a garage for the state government to reduce cost, to reduce, uh, you know, um, the kind of way, you know, the, the drivers and the, comp the company vehicles or other government vehicles are being repaired. I created a lot of departments. Uh, that video, I think I sent it to the proprietress already. Uh, with the way I created different departments in Edo State for the Edo State government, we were able to do those things that, you know, even when men see it, they'll say, you know what, they know what they are doing. And sincerely, the lady mechanic, we know what we are doing. We've been able to break that hard yoke. The hard yoke, I did that breaking. That is why you now see a lot of girls are embracing to do this profession. You can see husband bringing wife, parents bringing daughters, friends bringing friends, you know? So it's just amazing. Like I thought I was going to do the job, just do it, have some money to be able to take care of my immediate family. That's what I was thinking. But now the thing is growing and growing up to the extent we have, of, we have an office, in Canada, in Ottawa, Canada, run by Jennifer Lavoie. She came as a volunteer. We work with a lot of embassies as well. And uh, we work with the VSO. VSO bring expatriates to us, whether from Germany, England, Netherlands, we we'll always have them. Coming for capacity building for the lady mechanic uh, and some of them for fundraising and different kind of skills they, they have to come and impact in what we are already doing here. In the state of Nigeria, we have over 400 female mechanics there right now. A lot of them you can find, you know, changing the narrative in those state was my aim, you know, because I'm from that place and when I travel, a lot of people are saying, you know what, 
your state. What are you doing about it? That has made me go back home and I've really given a lot back to the states. You find them in different car companies. There's no car companies in Nigeria that does not have, you know, the services of the Lady Mechanic Initiative from Coast Charis, Eliza Day, Toyota Nigeria, Miss Tibushi, Sun Moto, just name it. There's no car company. Right now, it might also interest you that we also have guests working in a car company in Dubai as well. It is becoming internationally. Of course, the BBC World News, I work with them too, is called Exchange Programs. They sent in a girl, a lady mechanic from Scotland that has come to the garage in Lagos to learn how to also fix cars, you know. We've been on CNN World News twice. We've been on Al Jazeera that we won, we won the documentary called My Nigeria in 2017 at the New York Film Festival. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, really went around the world for people to see the work we do. We work with a lot of international communities, uh, international, uh, you know, people that have a whole lot of ideas to bring into the program. We have girls in Kano City that was sponsored by MacArthur Foundation, Lagos State, Edo State. We have guests all over the state. And it's really growing out like a white fire. Why? Because the training has become the trainer for them to see that Sandra, the lady mechanic, has been successful doing this. That is the primary aim of other women coming in. Like, you know, I don't, I've never seen the best job in the world more than you being a woman mechanic. You know what you're doing. You fix cars. You are being paid. You fix ten. Like I tell my girls, in Lagos State, with the kind of traffic we have in Lagos State today, you, have to, you just need 2% of the vehicles for you to fix over years to become what you want to be. And you will never go wrong. You will never go wrong being a female mechanic. You will never go wrong being a female that sprays vehicle. That's the body work and spraying. You can never go wrong when you become a lady vulcanizer. And you can never go wrong when it's just the upholstery of a vehicle you know how to fix as a lady. Those ones, I tell those tailors around, if you know how to make a dress, you'll be able to know how to make this car seat the car detailing inside the vehicle to make it beautiful. And that's a lot of money. Anything you want to do, as long as it's automotive, of course, it will bring food to your table. You don't need to kind of produce your CV and start going about to look for job. Also, the Lady Mechanic won the Inspirational Woman of the Year Award that was given by the Lagos State Government years back as well. And not just that, we, want, we have a lot of, a lot of, you know, um, awards from different organizations. I also, this might also amaze you that I was the first mechanic that fixes this same present governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, his vehicle, when he was employed by Zenith Bank. Our, our, our able, uh, you know, governor of, Central Bank of Nigeria, Emefile, used to be uh, used to be a staff of the Senate Bank of Nigeria in the early 90s. The car that was given to him as his official car, I was the one that fixed it for him. Quote me anywhere. Even if you have to write to him, I was the mechanic that fixed it for him. He knows me very well and is one of my mentors. Not just only him, of course, Ngozi Okonja Iwela too is one of my great mentors, of course, because he's always attending our program. Um, when we all, always have, uh, you know, programs to do in uh, Morocco, uh, bringing together 54, 54 African countries. So he's always there. He's a great mentor of the lady mechanic as well. And also we've met a lot. I don't know where to start from. The vice president of Nigeria, was with us in Anamco, Enugu State. We have guests there too when we are flagging out the Empower program. So a, a whole lot. For the GIZ, we work for the JAMA government. Of course, I have been sponsored 
sponsored by the American government to visit seven states in the U.S. That was my first time of traveling out. The one I got visa for never worked. After I've been able to create myself, get, got my own workshop, started working, that was when the American government said, you know what? We have to send you to the U.S. Come and see how they produce vehicle. Come and go to General Motors, see how things are being done. I went there and I went to the White House. They took me from Washington, D.C. airport, took me to White House State Department and gave me an escort. I was like a queen from Nigeria. I was like, really? Where am I? Am I in the White House? So, so, so something like that. And, you know, they were taking me every other three days from one state to another state. It was a huge impact when I came back to Nigeria to put into what I'm doing today. When I came back, a few days before I came back, it was on CNN already. The lady mechanic is here and there. And I was in my workshop when I got back fixing car, and I got a, a phone call. You know, this telephone, you normally just, you know, the, the number one, Nokia, that will fall down, uh, open up, and you have to put it back again. That was the phone I was using then. That was in 2004. And I got a call from former president of Nigeria. And I got a call from the former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo. When I picked up the phone, how did I know? I said, hello. He said, hello, this is Olusha Gwon Basenjo. I said, my phone dropped. Nobody, my phone just dropped because I was confused. I said, what? I was so scared. The phone opened and I picked it up, couple it back. I was so scared. I went to my neighbor in the garage. I said, come on. I don't know what happened. But somebody called, he said, it's the president. Olusha Gwon Basenjo. I don't think so. So when I coupled my phone, 10 minutes later, same call came. He said, don't be scared. This is the president. My people are going to call you. I'm proud of you. And you are going to come and see me in Abuja. Hey, I said, God, oh. I was so scared. Then I said, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I was simultaneously, I was just saying, okay, sir. Okay, sir. You know, they later called me and they said, the president wants to meet with me. I shall forward all the names of the people that are coming with me. We went, celebrated us one or two ways, encouraged us, gave us some equipment to, to put back to the workshop and all that. You can become a female mechanic and become that mother and become that beautiful wife and you are fixing cars. And there's no way the children looking at you will not emulate one or two things that you are doing. It's very important. I don't want women to shy away to feel, oh, how does this car work? Every woman wants to be on a G wagon. Every woman wants to drive big cars. They just see these cars driving past. I like that car. Eh? But do you know what's there? It's so simple, my dear. The effort we use in carrying babies in our body to now push and have the baby come out is more difficult than you. It's more Difficult than you knowing how to fix cars. It just requires your attention, focus, perseverance. You have to have all that for you to continue to do that. And the most important thing, knowing God, that every obstacles, every, you know, challenges is a stepping stone for you. It has come to me. My workshop has been demolished in Lagos more than four times. But I never gave up because I was in the wrong land. And Lagos said they don't play with their land. They said it's their gold. I was in, on the wrong place, fixing cars. And they just come, lady mechanic, you have moved here again. Bra, 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 bra. They pull down the structure. I'll be laughing. At times, tears will roll, out, roll down my eyes. But why is this tears coming out? It's telling me, don't go back to the kitchen. You must move forward. Get, I'll be telling them, you know what? Two weeks time, you see me in another place. No giving up. No fear of the unknown. You must continue to move. Women today, a lot of women are in their you know, comfort zone. Auto mechanic profession is mainly for men. How can I bring out this engine? No man, what? No man can carry one engine. The engine as a component as different segments. 
You have to remove the cover, go to the cylinder, go to the crankcase, go to the sump. It has different ways. The way it's being built. And no man can carry the whole of engine. So for this, I'm able to tell a lot of women, the secret to the job is this. But you are thinking is this because you have not gone into the workshop. I am not telling you what the men, they are doing to make money. So we, the women, let's venture into it. What stops a married woman coming out to say, lady mechanic, I want to learn how to service a vehicle. Do it yourself. So that that mechanic, what your mechanic is not telling you, the lady mechanic is telling you. I think one of these days we'll have to have that show too. I'll mm. come back to greater height to discuss this. Mm. So that we'll come one like that. Bringing women together to tell mm. them the truth about the, how their engine run. You cannot see a light on your dashboard and you are just being scared, parking the car, calling your mechanic. Hey, mechanic, hey, Emeka, I saw one red light on my dashboard. I don't know what to do. And make her will say, oh, money don't drop. Make I tell her, I'm waiting. I won't tell her, make you bring money. Okay, madam, now the oil switch. Send me money. I'll send my, I, I, my this thing to you now. Put 20,000. I'll bring the switch as I come. Tell me where you day. Moreover, that's not the case. Hello, women. That's not the case. A lot of time, that is not the case. You are being ripped off. That is why yes. I keep on telling women that you need to know. It's not difficult. You can sign up for one more to learn how to service your own vehicle. Even if you don't want to touch that engine or yet. But you know already what you need to provide for your mechanic to service your car. And you are standing there is doing it and you are collecting your key. Be the brake pad, you know how to fix the brake pad. Even your tires. In the morning, you are supposed to go around your vehicle, the things you need to check. Before you put the key, ignition key to start your car. I'm telling you, when you know all this, it's like, man, the world is on your hand. It's so interesting. It's the best job so ever for you to know that nobody can trek. Nobody can trek from here to here, but you need a vehicle. So even if you are a youth copper and you have just finished school, you want to start writing CV, where is the job? How much will you be paid as a youth copper? What have you gone to study? Because I know about a lot of youth coppers, you have to still put them through. I tell them, the mechanical student, be honest with yourself. What will ever increase any bottom line? of any company for them to employ you will be your practical know-how, your hands-on skill, not the theory you are carrying about. That will bring money to your pocket. Yes, you know, you need to know how to read and write. Not that you must be a university graduate for you to be able to learn how to fix cars. No. Mothers, you can do this. If your name is Caro on this platform today, I challenge you, Caro. Why don't you set up your own workshop or your own alignment and we balancing center? And that's also bringing income to you. And of course, you are a lecturer in the school. But because you know that, the lady mechanic can set, set it up for you, put guests for you there to be running it for you. If you are interested in having lady mechanic franchise, you can come to us. We we'll we'll also help you to do that. Anything you want, just go through our website to see all the things that we are doing. I don't want to take too much of your time. Wow. We, also, <laughs> first, we can take 2006 Prado Jeep to 2020 model. When you see it on the road, it looks as if it's just newly made, manufactured. We do all that. It's called Pimp My Ride. If you have a hold vehicle, that you are so you so love and you want it, you want us to pimp it for you. We do that in our garage too. Don't forget, you can also sow a seed to that girl you don't know. That girl that is running after your car on traffic selling granite for you. Who is she? Why is she selling granite? Maybe you can help somebody acquire a skill. That skill called the Lady Mechanic Initiative. 
the skill of fixing a car stays with you for the life, for life. It stays with everybody for the rest of one's life because you know it is your intellectual property. Nobody's coming to take it away from you. It's not like when I'm a banker, I might they just say, you know what, your target is 50 billion and I'm not able to bring 10 billion. You are fired. When you become a lady mechanic, nobody fires you. You only fire yourself. You fire yourself. And that's called retirement. Okay. It does not stop you from not being pregnant. You can be pregnant and still go to work the way you normally go to work to your office. And maybe your seven to eight months, you take your leave. But me, I'm in the workshop even two weeks to the time I'll give birth. I'm always there. I'll just see I'm, you know, feeling some up before I will leave the workshop. I still go there. Just that you'll not be able to now bend down to lose one thing or the other. But, you know, supervision. To everyone here, the lady mechanic after school club, Greater High School, if you need it, we can come set up partner to set up a garage inside your school where we can have the after school club. And that goes a long way because a lot of women are running away from engineering today, but we take the pupils through the rudiment and, you know, the routine maintenance of, you know, the vehicles and all that. It's in some kind, you know, start, they start thinking in the direction of science. You know, I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. They become serious with their science courses. And before you know it, that's what they want to go and study. I have a lot of my girls in the university studying mechanical engineering. It might also, I, I would like to share this good news with you. We also just got, you know, scholarship for some of our girls going to the University of Cyprus in Turkey you know, funded by United Nations through University of Turkey. It shows to you that the girls I literally just pick up off the streets. I don't know my girls before, but, be, but, but by the time they come into the initiative, we become one big family. We now know ourselves. We take them on different skills. Anything, all the skills mentioned before to you that I'll still share with the proprietress to send out to people in case you have your neighbor's daughter, your brother's daughter in the village, you want to bring her to Lagos to learn one thing or the other, or would you want to help? Name it. Come to the Lady Mechanic Initiative. We'll be able to help you. If you have seen those girls without hope, we'll build their hope. We'll build their confidence. Because if you don't have confidence, you cannot withstand communication skills with customers that you want to fix cars for. Because some customers will come and tell you, oh, she's a woman, let me go and bully her. That lady mechanic will bully you, man. She's a woman, let's go and bully her. I say to them, the lady mechanic knows what she's doing. She knows her right. She will be the one to bully you. You can't bully a lady mechanic because already she has confidence. She has communication skill. She knows what she's doing. And she'll put it right. And your vehicle will be fixed and you'll be happy. That is just it. So I think I'll stop here because if I continue, we'll not live here. I'm talking, it's almost like an hour. Okay. To contact us, please go to www.ladymechanicinitiative.org. Send us an email, sandra.ladymechanic at gmail.com. Who do you want to help? Help a girl today is called the benefactor. And you want us to mentor girls? We are always available to do that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.